and Commissioner, Commissioner Somerville. President calling from Ypsilanti, Michigan. And that is six for quorum, all set. Okay, the next agenda item is public participation. Is there anyone from the public here that would like to speak? Can you see anyone from the public? I know you aren't ready. You weren't ready or prepared, Ashley, but can you see that? I, I do not see anyone from, I, 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 I see we, we have, have one. We have Monica Prince, she is here. If she would like to speak, she is here. Monica, would, would you like to make some comments? No, I'm just here to listen, thank you. Thank you for joining us this morning. Okay, we have no public participation. So we will now jump to commission response to public participation. There is none. So we will have the approval of the minutes from our, it says June, but shouldn't it be July meeting? Yes. So should we change that June 2nd to July 2nd meeting? Minutes? Yes. With that correction, can we have an approval of the July 2nd meeting? And make that motion. Support. Okay, uh, Marie made the motion and who seconded? I can second Annie. it. I'm sorry, who did? Annie. Annie, Annie seconded, okay. Um, now the discussion items today will be, we will have a presentation from Chris Lemon from the Ann Arbor Community Foundation. Is Chris here today? Well, okay. I am here. Okay. The floor <laughs> is yours, Chris. All right. Thank you for joining us. Absolutely. Well, I, I appreciate the invite. I'm sorry to hear that Marta is not feeling well today. Um, hopefully there's a quick recovery on her end. Um, for those that uh, have not had a chance um, uh, to cross paths with me, my name is Christopher Lemon and I serve as Vice President of Community Investment for the Ann Arbor Area Community Foundation. And I'm going to be um, doing a presentation today about a project that has been in the works for about a year and a half now, and that is the development around a potential aging strategy for Washtenaw County. Um, I do have a slide deck that I'm going to use to uh, support this presentation, so I'm going to screen share now if that is okay. And if uh, somebody can give me a verbal thumbs up, if you can see, that would be fantastic. Verbal yes. thumbs up. Fantastic, thank you. One second while I navigate here. This is always the, the awkward transition trying to go from participant to presenter. Um, okay, so uh, we're gonna travel through this now. So presentation specifically made for the Commission on Aging. Um, whenever we do a presentation uh, on behalf of the foundation, one of the things we always like to do is to present our core values. Um, the values that you see right now were updated for the foundation about three years ago. Um, I'm not going to go through these. Everybody can read. I'm going to be um, passing these, this uh, presentation along uh, to all of you to have for your own um, reference. But we find that it's incredibly important to lead with our values because if you don't know what is the driving force behind our work, then it's hard to understand why it is that we're doing this work. Um, personally, I always like to lead with our values because um, I'm a firm believer in transparency. Uh, if you don't see any of these five core values in the work that we present both now and moving forward, um, we need to be held accountable for that. So, you know, through a presentation or through a grant initiative, if you don't see things like pursuing equity, earning trust, you know, leveraging knowledge, I want you to reach out to us and let us know because maybe it's there, but we didn't do a good job of, of making that connection to that value. Um, but transparency, we feel, is just hugely important, um, especially when we try to position ourselves as partners in the work. Um, partners need to be able to trust one another. So those are the values. 
Um, there we go. Sorry, I've got a little bit of a lag on my computer here. I apologize. So why an aging strategy for Washtenaw County? That might be top of brain for some of you right now. Um, and the reality is that Washtenaw County is rich in resources with a very strong nonprofit sector to support older adults and their caregivers. What is absent, however, though, is a coordinated and detailed plan to assure an equitable and sustainable pathway forward that maximizes every older adult's ability to live a healthy and fulfilling life. Um, I want to be clear here. Well, I'm not throwing anyone under the bus. Like, I think that um, the county and that the nonprofits are doing, um, I think, the best job that they can right now uh, in supporting older adults uh, and caregivers. Um, but sometimes when we're not in coordination, um, what, what inevitably happens is that there end up being gaps in services or services not available. So our hope is that through um, an aging strategy that we can bring all related parties together to find um, an equitable pathway forward that truly meets the needs of older adults and caregivers in our community. Now, an aging strategy is not something that one party alone pushes forward, but instead it is collectively embraced and advanced by county leadership, nonprofits, funders, and also community members. Uh, and so you're going to see through this entire presentation how it is that we are trying to make that happen. I always um, think it's important to to present data. Now, I'm not going to go through this as well. Um, I know in my conversations with Marta um, that as a part of each of your orientation to be on the Commission on Aging, that there um, is a lot of data that is presented to you. Um, but we are a data-driven organization, and we believe that solutions, you know, community-based solutions, need to be um, justified with data. Um, and so we present some of that to you here. Um, now, what you're seeing is somewhat of a, um, I'm going to say like a pejorative or kind of a negative um, take on the data. These are a lot of things that um, uh, need to be addressed. What it doesn't address is all the good things that are happening in our community right now. And so I don't want this to be like this all doom and gloom, right? Um, but there's a lot of work that still needs to happen in our community to make it um, truly supportive for older adults and their caregivers. So, um, you know, what we're hoping with this project is to address a lot of the things that are listed on this particular slide and then leveraging those things that are going very well. But for the sake of the presentation, I didn't want to have 30 slides of all that data, but this is just kind of a comprehensive overview. But I will say this, you know, we know that just based upon current numbers, um, that by the year 2040, that the older adult population in our county will have doubled from levels in 2017. Um, and that community-based solutions take time, right? Especially when you are talking about trying to um, bring together collaboration, but systems level changes take time, um, but we need to start that process now um, you know, we have a lot of older adults whose needs are not being met effectively and to kick the can down the road, um, really is a place of privilege, right? And for those that are suffering, those that need help right now, um, then we're in essence ignoring who they are as humans in this moment. And so there is a responsibility to start, to start this now. But also, because we know that it takes time is that the reality is that the quality of life in 2040 is really going to be dictated by how we respond right now. Um, and so our hope is to really create a sense of urgency uh, as well as a sense of excitement around what is possible moving forward with this project. So um, the aging strategy consultants, the, the foundation put out an RFP. Uh, we did a number of interviews. And at the end of the day, um, the foundation has chosen MGT Consulting to lead the aging strategy work here in the county. Now, um, MGT embraces an equity lens um, for all of their work, uh, and the foundation felt that this was uh, really kind of an imperative when, when looking at um, what is possible through this. And so because of that equity lens to all of their work, we really felt that they were the best choice uh, to drive this project forward. Um, I will say that uh, MGT is based out of Florida, but they do have representatives um, all over the country. Uh, Post-COVID, a lot of organizations are this way, especially consulting firms, um, where they have people simply, you know, where they live, it allows the remote working, allows them to be place-based um, in their own communities. 
But here at the foundation, we really do try to prioritize local contractors whenever possible. And the one of the, the big benefits of utilizing MGT is that our um, our local representative, who is a project lead, her name is Jamie Hoffman. She is um, a former employee of the United Way of Washtenaw County, who in when she was there, um, she really racked up years of experience when it comes to grant distributions, evaluations, community voice initiatives, as well as the use of data to support community initiatives. And so this was kind of the best of all worlds. So we have a firm which has national presence, national resources, but then also has a local face, um, which was for us a huge win. So um, where are we in this process and kind of what are the next steps? These next three or four slides, we're gonna go into detail. And I wanna, I wanna um, lift up that if you have questions, um, feel free to write those down. Odds are, I'm gonna probably answer a lot of your questions, but probably not all of them. Uh, so we'll have a chance at the end um, uh, for you to ask any questions and I will do my, my best to answer them. So right now, um, MGT is currently reviewing a very robust body of data that was compiled by the foundation and was sourced from our community partners, such as the Commission on Aging, the Washington Health Initiative, the Healthy Aging Collaborative, the SAST Senior Steering Committee, as well as AAA-1B. Now, concurrently, MGT is also collecting and reviewing aging strategy plans that have, a pr that have been proven effective um, for communities that are similar in size and demographics to Washtenaw County. This also includes best practice documents to, um, that look to support equitable aging. So the data is, um, once again, we feel is incredibly important um, and that um, as you'll see at this last bullet point, that once the data is compiled, MGT will then be assessing all of the data, both qualitative and quantitative data, um, to formulate a robust understanding of needs, gaps, and successes in the county. This landscape analysis will then support the identification and build out of goals and priorities for the eventual multi-year plan. Um, I want to point out too, so um, the looking at um, other similar size in, in, in counties that are similar in makeup as well um, that have effective aging strategy plans. We're not going to just simply import somebody else's plan because we know that there are unique aspects and nuances to our community which make it unique. Um, but we feel um, anytime you hire researchers and evaluators, right, this is the, this is their best practice, this is what they do, um, but we need to make sure that we have an understanding about what is being effective in other communities, um, because we will absolutely beg, borrow, or steal from wherever we can. Um, we will be in conversation with those communities as well to find out um, more information as needed. Um, but we feel that this also helps to make the the um, not the process not only be more informed, but also more efficient with time. Why spend all this time, you know, recreating the wheel when we actually could have been pulling key components from other communities? So, but it's not going to be a cut and paste. So the compilation of data, understanding where we are, best practices, and then the next step, which I'll get into right now, will hopefully will hopefully um, put together a really fantastic plan. So. Outside of the, 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 the quantitative data, now we're going to try to get into some of the qualitative data. So MGT and the foundation are currently scheduling key informant meetings to gain insights into the structures that support and fund supportive and enrichment opportunities for older adults. Now, I want to pause here in that we very specifically call out supportive and enrichment opportunities for older adults. Um, in the in the funder space, uh, you know, as a community foundation, um, so often the requests that we get are going to be for supportive services, right? So those things that older adults need in order to, um, and honestly, at some point, just get by, right? So we're talking about how can they stay in their homes? How can they have enough food? How can they get to medical appointments? All of those kinds of things. And those are absolutely an imperative. But we also don't want to leave out those enrichment opportunities, right? These are the things that that um, allow someone to have a healthy and fulfilling life. Um, and so we don't want to stop short with just supportive services. For us, you see all kinds of programs happening in the county. You see a lot of our um, 
our senior centers are doing some fantastic like exercise programs. Or we also know too that like workforce development is incredibly important that a lot of older adults right now are considering um, going back into the workforce, hopefully by choice, not by need. Um, but we want to make sure that there are opportunities that help make their lives more um, enriched and not just focusing strictly on the supportive services. Um, so these meetings with key uh, with key informants um, are going to focus on topics such as food security, housing, transportation, senior centers, funding systems, as well as county operations. The goal is to walk away from these conversations with a grounded understanding as to what are some of the short term and long term solutions. What are the resources and hurdles to implementing those potential changes? And then what are the funding opportunities to ensure longevity? As a funder, I fully appreciate that um, there are a million great ideas, right? But funding is an imperative. So we need to figure out what are the short-term and long-term goals, right? Because as I mentioned, this is a five to 10 year plan that we're putting together. So what are those goals that we're trying to achieve? What are the hurdles to getting there? What are the resources to getting there? And then how are we going to ensure that there is funding in place? Um, because you know, there are, we have an incredibly robust um, nonprofit sector. Um, the foundation, we could liquidate all of our assets right now, and that would not be enough to support all of the nonprofits that exist in Washtenaw County for one year. So we need to have a, some kind of a sustainability plan in place, right? And, and when it comes to financial sustainability, hope is never a plan. Um, so probably one of the hardest parts of this is going to be figuring out what does that sustainable funding look like um, for the different goals laid out in this eventual strategy. Now, once the key informant meetings are underway, MGT and the foundation will be scheduling meetings with community members to gain insights on some key topic on the same key topic areas that are listed above. So these conversations will prioritize older adults and caregivers with an intentional focus on older adults of color, those living in rural communities, those living with disabilities, and those uh, that identify as LGBTQ+. Now, these conversations will not be Ann Arbor-centric, but instead countywide in focus. And I, I cannot stress this enough. Um, one of the hurdles that we have as a foundation is that when it says Ann Arbor Area Community Foundation, a lot of times the assumption is that the majority of our work is here in Ann Arbor. Um, you also see that Ann Arbor um, um, has a lot more resources than our adjacent communities. Uh, and, and so I can understand why people think that a lot of our money goes to Ann Arbor. In reality, the majority of our money does not go to, excuse me, to Ann Arbor. But I want to make clear that when we are doing this project, we are going to be focusing on everyone. So it's going to be Ypsilanti, it's going to be Milan, it's going to be Dexter, it's going to be Manchester, um, it's going to be Chelsea, Celine. We have to make sure that this encompasses the entire county because the needs of those in Ypsilanti are very different from the needs of those in Chelsea. Now there could be transportation needs for, for both, but like transportation solutions can look very different for Ypsilanti than they do for Dexter or Chelsea or somewhere else. So we have to make sure that we are truly embracing the unique components that make up all of Washtenaw County. So I, I want to, this could be really high level, right? I know that I'm talking like a 30,000 foot level and you're probably going, I'm not exactly sure what this means. Um, and to be honest, I don't necessarily know what this is going to look like, right? And that's an important piece. Um, I'm not sitting here with my plans for what an aging strategy could look like. And I'm just going through the motions so that we can launch what we think is necessary. That is, in fact, the exact opposite of what we're doing. Whenever you lean into community voice projects, you have to listen to the community that you serve, to those that are also serving, and then the eventual um, product has to directly reflect that input. So I can't get into detail what it's gonna look like because we don't know what that's gonna look like yet, but I can give you some examples of some of the recommendations or some of the goals that you might see in an aging strategy. So the first is going to be um, the implementation of an Office of Aging or an Older Adult Advocacy Officer within the county government. Such positions advocate for older adults when it comes to policy development or reform and throughout the budget development process. 
think of this as a position similar to the racial equity officer position within the county, right? Um, Elise Ashbury Payne does a great job of advocating, you know, in that space. And so and the reality is that if you don't have, you know, someone whose job is to advocate for older adults or for a particular priority population in government, it's it can be easy given there's a lot of need. It can be easy for that population to not be prioritized. Right. So that's one example. Um, another example is going to be the development of a centralized or single point of entry for older adults when it comes to accessing supportive services related to topics such as housing, food security, healthcare needs, et cetera. Now, a lot, of, a lot of the nonprofits in our community already do this, right? But the problem we have right now is that nonprofits who do, I think, a phenomenal job of responding for to need in the area that they cover, right? But anytime you have not like this mosaic of nonprofits providing these services, inevitably there are gaps. There are areas where their circles of, of, um, of impact don't connect. So it's those areas where people aren't served by the nonprofits where we see some of our greatest need. Uh, and so our, our, one of the possible things you might see are going to be centralized points of entry, right? So, and I actually have an example of this that we're currently working on right now. Um, I'm not sure how many of you were able to attend um, the transportation summit um, that we funded um, a few months ago. Out of this transportation summit, and it was it was fantastic. We had Debbie Dingle there, Chairman Hodge was there, um, Administrator Dill was there. We had representatives from transport the Transportation Authority, the State of Michigan. It was fantastic. Really, really great discussions around the transportation needs for older adults in our community. Well, out of that discussion. Uh, and all of the data that was presented, there were two solutions that were lifted up. One was the creation of another transit authority that would serve the west side of the county because the discussions in, in the data had shown that that um, the current transportation authority covers a limited area, not placing value, just stating the realities of it. And that comes right from Matt Carpenter, who heads up the ATA, but they serve a limited area, right? We know that rural communities struggle when it comes to transportation. So I was like, well, that's one thing. Let's create a second transit authority that serves the west side of the county. The other was the um, development of a transportation call center, um, which would serve older adults throughout the entire county. That is actually a project that we are currently working on with an organization called Phoenix Mobility Rising. Their goal is to set up a transportation call center that is housed here in Washtenaw County and staffed by residents of Washtenaw County um, that older adults can call to um, whenever they have transportation needs, whether that's for things like um, a trip to the doctor or wanting to go to a senior center, right? Or wanting to go um, you know, across the county for something else. But this <clears throat> opportunity, because feed, well, let me step back. Feedback has been that um, a lot, because there isn't a centralized way to access transportation, is that older adults often don't know who to call. And then when they do call, they'll find out that the transportation provider doesn't go to that particular area or they don't provide transportation that is like door to door or door through door, which oftentimes older adults need. Um, and so what we're looking at right now is Phoenix Mobility um, serving as the call center and then utilizing all of the nonprofits and for profits that provide rides in essence as contractors um, to support um, the geographies that they serve. Um, this is something that Phoenix does in other communities. Uh, and because this was uh, a solution that was lifted up at the summit, it's one that we are currently um, exploring, trying to implement as a pilot project here in the county. So this is, I wanted to, I, I mean, this, I'm not here to really talk about this transportation call center, but I wanted to give you an example of like what a centralized or what a single point of entry could look like um, for older adults within um, an aging strategy. Another example is exploration around multi-generational programming, such as community centers, as well as daycare facilities. Uh, you were seeing a lot of traction around this because what it does is it increases the opportunity for funding because funding oftentimes is tied to a priority population like youth, older adults, whatever. Um, so we're seeing a lot of traction in these particular areas. 
Um, we're also looking at uh, another thing that you might see is going to be the development of a comprehensive and live community dashboard that tracks key areas related to older adults. So we already have things similar to this. The, um, the health department um, currently built out um, a data dashboard regarding certain data points for older adults. You also have um, Poverty Solutions at U of M, which did their Opportunity Index. But what we're really looking at is something which really tracks um, where key areas stand with older adults, right? That could be wait lists for, um, for um, meal delivery programs, right? Things like that. But we, we find that data is incredibly important because it gives um, transparency to where things currently stand for older adults in our community. Um, last example is gonna be like a funding strategy that works to source funding from local funders, pointing at myself right now, county funding, an example here is a millage, whether uh, like a senior millage, um, as well as state and federal revenue streams. One of the things that we have found in our research early on is that if you do have coordination of services, right, and if some of these coordination um, components are housed in, in the county, is that that opens up many more opportunities for federal and state revenue streams, whereas those are much harder to gain um, from a nonprofit standpoint. So uh, we wanna make sure, as I admit, stated earlier, that we are looking very closely at what does financial sustainability look like for any of these um, potential solutions. So um, once completed, MDT and the foundation will then schedule a presentation. So when I say once completed, once the, um, the aging strategy has been completed and done, we will then schedule presentations to make public the aging strategy. This will include presentations to the Commission on Aging, key stakeholder groups, as well as the Washtenaw County Commissioners. Um, in addition to presentations, this report will be made available on the foundation's website and we will also be sending it out to key partners and officials to every city and township throughout the county. And this is important. When we when we did our healthy and fulfilling aging report uh, two years ago, we sent it out to every county commissioner. We sent it out to um, every elected official in every city and township in the county. Um, we also sent it out to all the nonprofits and we did presentations on it. Um, and what we found was that by having kind of this benchmarked understanding of need and opportunity is that we had a lot more people asking how can they be a part of some solutions. Um, we don't want to live in ambiguity, right? We want to live with clarity. And sometimes that means owning where we are not doing our best work and that's okay, but we need to then determine what are the solutions to those issues moving forward. Um, and that's our goal with this as well. We're not in any way trying to shame. We're not going to be pointing out who's doing a good job or a bad job. What we want to do is say, listen, these are the resources. These are the opportunities for um, improvement. And how can we collectively do this together? Um, the foundation views an aging strategy is a crucial step in making Washtenaw County a community where older adults can age in a healthy and fulfilling way. And with the completion of this strategy, you know, what we are hoping and what we are, um, we will then be looking to support the journey of working through this multi-year plan as a partner and key funder of opportunities outlined. So this isn't something where we're just going to develop and say, okay, everybody figure it out. We are wanting to, to make sure that we are present as always as a thought partner and as a funder so that we can truly move the needle for our county for older adults. So that's my presentation in a nutshell. I'm sure you probably feel like you just drank from the fire hose. Um, and I, okay, screen share is done. So what I will do now is I'm going to pause because once I get the pulpit, it's hard for me to give it up, but I am going to um, open it up to any and all questions that you might have. And I already see hands. I don't know who was first. Uh, Elizabeth, I'll go left to right on my screen on the, uh, okay. So um, I have a couple comments. First of all, I'm so glad that, uh, you have folks from MGT strategies who are familiar with Michigan because my experience in a long time working in government is it seems like Michigan is organized differently from every other state in the country. Yep. And um, people who aren't aware of 
are, um, you can either call it quirkiness or uniqueness. <laughs> I focus on solutions that just aren't doable in Michigan. So I think that that's great that you're bringing in that level of expertise. I do have a couple uh, suggestions that were about uh, partnering with us as a Commission on Aging. First of all, I hope somewhere as you're talking to people, you consider not just talking to the commission as a whole, but I know all the individual members uh, have lots of expertise and experience in different areas. So I think I can probably speak for any of us that we would be happy to sit down and provide as much information as you're willing to hear from us. Uh, so I hope that's considered and at the beginning of the process and not at the end. Yep. And then talking about how you present this, part of uh, presenting is of course, um, building momentum for support of the strategy. So I would hope that you consider um, working with us um, about how we could be helpful in building that momentum, not just as um, doing a presentation to us, but as you begin to think about how you want to reach out and build support. Uh, we have a communication subcommittee that hasn't had a lot to communicate uh, <laughs> yet. Uh, and I'm sure we are ready and willing to um, be able to share that. And it gives a whole different level of networking, uh, both with individual commissioners that we represent a commission district and all our various networks that people are so tied in that um, I think um, it would be great if you think about us as being partners in um, sharing this across the county. Absolutely. I mean, I think this is something. So when it comes to like these key informant conversations, I will absolutely be reaching out. Um, there are, um, uh, we're having to kind of be strategic with our time because obviously, I mean, I could spend three years on developing this, but I, I have other things to do as well. Um, and we, and when there is a sense of urgency, uh, in terms of starting it, but, um, I had a really great conversation with Marta, uh, last week, we spoke for about an hour and a half about it. I will be reaching out to the commission on aging. Absolutely. Um, I'm also, I mean, I'm really excited that we're, I think I have four or five conversations set up with uh, some of our commissioners as well, which is great. So um, I'm, I'm excited about the input. And then when it comes to like, for us, like, you know, partnership comes in many forms and I'm excited to kind of see where this goes. You know, I think that um, I know that the commission on aging is one of um, one of your roles is to provide recommendations to the commissioners. Right. And so, you know, I, I will never tell somebody what to do, um, except unless you're my kid, although he's 18 now, so that doesn't happen anymore. Um, <laughs> but the, um, you know, this is where, how, you know, I'm very open. And Martin and I had some discussions earlier, but I don't want to get into that too much because that's the cart, you know, is way ahead right now. Um, but I'm very open to what that looks like, right? And, and wanting to uh, not overstep, but make sure like, where's the opportunity and how does the commission want to um, be a part of this process moving forward? Um, I, I, I do want to say that um, when it comes to how we travel through this space, um, fully appreciating that there are, um, that inevitably like politics does get involved in this, right? And so um, what the last thing that I ever want to do is to, um, well, what we try to do as a foundation is to present ourselves as a third party, where we are oftentimes a convener. You know, we're utilizing our funds to to support all of this work so that it stays clean. We want to be informed by everyone, community, as well as elected officials, because everyone has a very unique perspective on what's what's possible. I mean, I know that like community. I had a I had an interesting conversation yesterday with a, with a community member that has some very strong opinions about what the county is doing wrong, and yet 
having, I think, really good relationships with the county, I understand where the county has limits as to what they can or can't do, right? Um, so there's, we want to make sure as a third party that we're really honoring all perspectives and finding a solution that has every chance of success. Um, so I, you know, when it, so when it comes to like working with the commission, I am very, very open to that, but I want to, you know, maintain the fact that we do need to main, um, have some level of neutrality through this process. But when it comes to like the promotion of, or even leaning into your processes, like if there, there was a re recommendation that the commission wanted to make to the commissioners, very, very open to that, right? Because once it's present, what people want to do with it, that's that's kind of you know their authority in that space. Um, so yes, we will be talking about communications, and yes, I will be reaching out a hundred percent when it comes to conversations as key informants. Does that make sense? Did I just go on a total rant that just didn't make any sense at all? Or okay, good. I'm not fully caffeinated yet, so I apologize. <laughs> um, and then I whoa, who else had a hand? Sorry, I thought Brenda, did you have your hand up or did you take it down? I did have my hand up and um, some of the uh, concerns and questions that Elizabeth had were some of mine. Okay. And so I'm glad to hear that you are going to keep the Commission on Aging involved with this whole process. And uh, what I was hoping that you could also look at, it was confusing for some older adults, is duplication of services. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of that is happening and yep. it's really confusing. So if you guys would take a look at that as well during the process. Uh, absolutely. I mean, that that is um, the duplication of services makes it a lot harder to navigate. Um, sometimes services need duplication because there's that much of a demand. But like, once again, if you if you call an organization for a service, and they're like, nope, sorry, we're full. If there's not like a warm handoff to another organization, if you don't know what's available, then how do you know where to go? And we can't always trust the interwebs, right? The internet doesn't always give us accurate information. And sometimes, especially in this day and age where there's a lot of scams happening, the last thing we want to do is to continue to put older adults in a vulnerable place where they can be taken advantage of. And so that's why there are so many wins to like a centralized, you know, like whether a call center or central intake for first certain services, um, whatever we can do to lean into our resources and then address those gaps in services, fantastic. So yes, Brenda, you are heard and I honor your perspective and I will do my best to act on those. Thank you. Marie, what you got? Yeah, so excuse me, I was at a uh, CapDart meeting in the Chelsea Dexter area last night, and they were talking about, they're really focused on housing and transportation. And so I let them know some of the work that's been happening with um, within the county, and, and they weren't aware of a lot of it. And so I mentioned the aging strategy, um, and they're, they're very interested in jumping on board um, and participating in those conversations. And so I just wanted to check with you on what your plan is for getting them engaged, inviting them and, and that kind of thing. Okay. So um, in philanthropy, we use a lot of acronyms uh, and I am very guilty of that because uh, not everybody knows what that means. You referenced one at the beginning of your sentence, CapDart. I don't- CapDart. You know, to be honest, I'm not sure what CapDart stands for. And they just <laughs> changed their name to something different um, okay. that more encapsulates what they're going to do. Um but they're they're a, a collaborative on the western side of the county that wants to to work regionally on some issues specific to the western side of the county. A lot of resources are available for Ann Arbor and Ipsy, um, but you know things kind of start falling off when you get further into those rural areas. Oh, and yeah. so they're just trying to work collaborative collaboratively. It was the mayor of Chelsea at the meeting, one of the Linden Township trustees um and a dexter representative um she's on their their planning board okay but, i i would be um very interested in that um so how about you and i chat offline uh perfect. and and we can go from there because the, the more that we can reach into or engage with existing collaborations that that works even better right because yeah, yeah. yeah. so great i appreciate that thank you yeah thanks uh, is it Juliet? Did I say your name right? 
Yes. Oh, phew, good. <laughs> Thank you. So um, you spoke about um, engaging people from Wash all over Washtenaw County and having mm-hmm. like an informant group that you would meet with. How would those people be selected? What would be the process for that? So part of what we're doing right now is reaching um, into the, um, so I'll, I'll take one step back here. Sorry, I always jump into the deep end and then forget to wade in. Um, as a foundation, we have, um, in our past 60 years, we have really tried to um, lean into the, the expertise of the nonprofit sector, right? And one of the things the nonprofit sector does better than any other is develop relationships with those that they serve, right? And, and those are almost always trust-based. And I fully appreciate that when a funder comes into the room, there's not always trust, right? Especially from community members, because they don't necessarily see the direct correlation between our funding and supportive services. So if I just put out a community call for, hey, who wants to come talk to me about the needs of, you know, um, older adults that are living with disabilities, they're gonna be like, why? <laughs> you know, so so we we're, what we're doing for this process is that um, we will be reaching out to um, organizations like uh, Buenos Vecinos, um, the Disability Network, um, Turner C- uh, the Turner African American Service Council, um, to um, Asian Center for Southeastern Michigan. We're leaning into those um, uh, nonprofits to kind of help us to put together these listening sessions with the community. Because um, it's, you know, if I do it, the problem is, is that it's going to be only through my networks and mm-hmm. I'm only as good as what I know, mm-hmm. but it's what I don't know. That's what I have to embrace as an individual and as an organization. So um, for us, it is always in those organizations that, like, that I just referenced are just an example of some of the key informants that we will also be having conversations with moving forward. Um, because at the end of the day, you know, during COVID, and sorry, Juliet, I'm going to go off on a, on a little tangent here, but I promise you it's going to help to answer your question. Okay. Uh, one of the things that we found during COVID was that there were all kinds of surveys happening, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's related to older adults because everyone, what's going on? What's your need? What's your need? There was a lot of survey fatigue that happened, right? Because what was part of it, what was going on was that when you keep having people ask for your voice, but then mm-hmm. you don't necessarily see anything happen from it. You kind of feel like, so what's the point, right? The why, why, I mean, it feels good to be heard, but then if your needs aren't being met, then it's like, why, why am I continuing to do this? Because you're getting my hopes up and then I'm not seeing any kind of action. And so, you know, we have, I was just on it this morning, my, my Excel sheet um, of all the organizations that we're reaching out to, not only to be informed, but then I had mentioned in the plan, then we're going to be going back out to the community and then presenting this information because we want them to see because of your input, this is the final product. This is what we're going to be pushing forward because it, you know, what we're trying to do is to advocate for change that directly impacts our older adults. And and I and I can't say this enough. We have, you know, we know that Washtenaw County is what is it, top 10 most economically segregated counties in the country, right? Where there is great opportunity and, and where there's great work being done on the flip side is that we have communities that are incredibly under-resourced, right? And and that is a that's a polite way of saying that we're not helping them to the mm-hmm. extent that they deserve. Um, <laughs> We have to make sure um, that this solution is um, designed for our most marginalized populations, because when you design for them, then ultimately you're designing for everyone. But we can't. So we have to show them. Once again, this goes back to the transparency. We we heard you. We listened to you. And this is how we're going to implement what you feel is necessary as best as we can. So yes, so through our nonprofit, that was a really long way of saying we're leaning into our nonprofits and our existing relationships. Um, I'll work on shorter answers next time, Juliet. But hope does that make sense? Thank you. That makes <laughs> a lot of sense. I when you were talking about, I think it was really true about the surveys um, post COVID, during COVID, to gather information. Were there were there be focus groups or how yeah. qualitative yeah. data gathered and stuff yep. for the first there- surveys? Absolutely, there will be. And on top of that, we have um, all of the existing data that we have collected that has been qualitative and quantitative. We've already incorporated that into the the current uh, data analysis, right? So um, because we also know that COVID um, 
brought light on a lot of inequities, but the majority of those inequities were already in place, right? It's just now they're more, we're more aware of it because it impacted even more people, but those inequities are the same, right? I mean, but the, the worst example is the fact that, um, you know, that um, uh, in Ypsilanti, you know, for communities of color, they, the average lifespan is 10 years less than the rest of the county. Okay, we, we cannot just sit by and just say, wow, I wonder why. No, we need to likely actually act on that. And part of what we're hoping to do is to address those social determinants of health through this particular plan, right? Um, so I, I'm getting all riled up. I'm going to take a step back. Um, otherwise, we're going to be here till four. So thank you for answering my questions. I yeah, and answering probably a lot more than I need. No, we won't be here till four. We're chairing the meeting. <laughs> Brenda's right. dropping the hammer right now. I love it. Yeah. Um, Elizabeth, do you have another question? Uh, just a comment based on Juliet's question and what Marie shared. Uh, I'm wondering if perhaps if we have some particular groups or individuals that we think might be helpful as you develop the strategy as key informants, might we be able to uh, forward that information to you just so so you're aware of it? Absolutely not. <laughs> no, I would love it. That would be great. Um, the, you know, the, this is why I like doing these kinds of presentations because once again, I only know what I know. Um, so if there are organizations or even individuals um, that you feel would um, be beneficial to this process, maybe they're on our list, maybe they're not, but I will do my best to to get them as the uh, to participate in this process. Yes. What's the best way to get that info to you? The best way to do that is going to be an email. Um, and I don't. Let's see here. Um, I can. I guess there's not a chat function here. Um you can, can change your name to your email. Oh, okay, that was smart. Oh, that's a good idea. I think you want to say it out loud. I can put it in the minutes as well. Yeah, so it's C Lemon at aaacf.org. So Clemen, Marie, always your assistance level thinker. I like it. Any other questions? All right. Well, if something does come up, you know, it's uh, my inbox is always open. So feel free to shoot me um, questions, comments, whatever you would like, and I will do my best um, to, to answer them. Um, but I am very grateful for this time to be able to present to you. Um, this is, like I said, this has been a year and a half in the making. Um, and I am incredibly excited about the opportunity here, and I'm excited about the possibilities of what partnership can look like with this commission. So thank you for your time today. Um, I have one last question. I want to forward um, the slide deck to all of you, who, to, to Taylor. And Taylor, can you change your name to your email? So, <laughs> so I know where to send that to. I don't know if she heard you. Oh, oh, there we go. So, all right. So, T. Try not to be that person that speaks out loud as he writes here. There's nothing more annoying than that. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, great. Well, thank okay, you all thank again. You. Thank you, Chris, so much for your presentation today. All right. Have a great day. Thank you. All right. Now we will move on to... Um, uh subcommittee updates and we will start with uh you elizabeth um we have uh not met um it sounds like we're beginning to get in a place where we will have more things to communicate uh it sounds uh really exciting uh to you know in ever since we were formed this kind of the direction the commission was hoping to go is coalesce around a strategy and some more continued specific recommendations, which we have had made in the past to the county commission. And it sounds like we will have the opportunity to have some real data-driven recommendations to consider. Okay. 
All right, thank you. Uh, now we will have the ARPA uh, report. Uh, who's going to do that report? Is there anyone here that can you do that? Elizabeth? Is Miss Reynolds here today? No. So can you, do you have an ARPA report? No, I do not. Margaret has not been in touch with me. Um, okay. okay. Uh, then we will move on to the potential millage. Uh, Marie? Um, the only information on the potential millage that I've heard is that the um, county administrator has proposed a, a general millage that would also support seniors. Okay. Um, what about moving forward report? Yeah, so a lot of that meeting, we, we heard from Chris. He shared some preliminary information that he shared in more detail with us today, which was great. Um, we talked about some other updates happening with transportation. Um, following that transportation summit. So Chris mentioned the the transportation call center um, and we're very excited that Phoenix Mobility is championing that. Um, Chris also mentioned that we were looking at a, a second authority in the Western Washtenaw region and Wave and People's Express are, are pursuing a um, a, a rural authority right now. They're in very early stages, just talking to um, municipalities, their commissioners, um, and some other people who have gone through that process on, on what it looks like, what it's going to take. Um, they're going to start talking with a group called True, which does transportation advocacy in Southeast Michigan, as, to be one of those um, advocacy leaders um, in the process. And so very early stages, but seeing really good uh, momentum continuing there. And the final thing that we talked about was the Healthy Aging Collaborative is um, their new focus for their ad hoc groups is going to be housing. They had a kickoff meeting. Um, Amanda Carlisle from the Washna Health Alliance or Washna Housing Alliance came to speak about specifically the data she shared was on homelessness and homelessness uh, services prevention. She had a really great slide deck. I'm happy to share it with anyone who's interested. Um, and then really great conversation about what what still needs to be covered, what information do we need to get? Um, what do we want some of the our, our, you know, essentially deliverables to look like at the end of this next um, this next bit. And so Housing will be um, a big topic for everyone in this upcoming mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. um, and then the the other thing that we were we were talking about, you know, as far as future planning is wanting to hear more from the board of commissioners on on what we can do that would be helpful, um, especially given our our last meeting as a COA, um, we noticed there was some um, tension around what meetings some of us felt like we should have been invited to, but what's actually appropriate for us as COA um, to be looped in on and what we can just kind of keep in the know on. And so we had we had some discussion on that and we were hoping that Annie, uh, well, so I'll say before I asked Annie specifically, um, we talked about talking to our individual commissioners um, as well. Um, I have had a hard time getting a hold of mine and, and Ashley offered to, to bump Shannon and I appreciate that. But um, if we can all continue to develop that relationship with our individual commissioners so we, we can stay in the loop with them and, and advise them individually on senior issues, I think that can clear up a, a lot of of what we were noticing in the last meeting. Um, but Annie, I wanted to ask you directly as well, what what would be, as seeing that we're an advisory body, what what would be helpful from us? Okay. Uh, what can we contribute? Yeah, the, the, the best um, advice that I have for any advisory body um, is to pass resolutions on issues or like suggestions that you have. So 
formalize them um, and then they'll get shared with the board of commissioners in our agenda and, and shared in our packet as communications from the board. Um, and sometimes that might result in board action. Sometimes it might just, you know, be like an FYI. This is what the Commission on Aging um, is recommending. Um, so, yeah, resolutions. Great. Okay. Is, is the other thing you... that I'll say, I do think, I do think regularly checking in with like your board of commission member who represents you. And then obviously the, um, the at-large members, um, I think still like go to like the commissioner in your district because they work for you. Uh, I mean, we all work for all of you, but they, they're more responsible for you because you live in their district. So I would say continue to do that. Very good. Anything else from you, Marie? Nope, that was it, thank you. Okay, thank you for your report. Now, the next report is going to be from me, uh, the future town hall. Um, I would like to thank uh, Marie and Jennifer for continuing to work on the project. Right now, I don't have a report, but what I can say to you is that right now there's a lot of interest in having a town hall on the western part of the county if some of the folks on the commission would put on their thinking caps and later on share some ideas and suggestions, I would really appreciate it. And the next item on our agenda is new. We're gonna take a five minute break and then we're gonna come back. And when we come back, Annie is gonna be your turn to uh, uh, your turn on the agenda. So when we come back, Annie, you could just start right in. So what time do you... Sounds good. Pardon? I just what... said it sounds good. Okay. I have 10.06. So I'll see you in five minutes, everyone. Are we back? Annie? Who's fixing her earbuds? Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. I'm I'm trying to I for some reason I can hear music with my earbuds, so I'm trying to fix. Okay. I, I can you hear me okay? Yes. We I can okay. hear you. Awesome. Okay. Um thanks. So for my update, um we do have um an update on the ARPA RFP that closed on July 31st. Um and so we did have um we had nine organizations apply. Um, there's going to be an internal review that happens this coming week, and then I'll um, we, hopefully I'll be able to send out um, an update before our next meeting on where that's at. Um, but that is happening um, shortly. Um, many familiar organizations applied: um, Dexter Senior Center, Ipsy Senior Center, Food Gatherers, um, Ann Arbor Meals on Wheels, Ipsy Meals on Wheels, Catholic Social Services. Um, U of M, the Housing Bureau for Seniors, um, and then mm, Phoenix Mobility Rising. I've never heard of them before. Um, yeah, so we'll see how that goes. Um, happy that folks applied um, for funding. Um, and then on mapping, I have no update. Um, I'm waiting to hear back from the interim deputy director or administrator. Um, so I'll have Ashley send out an email communication to everyone once we get better. 
Okay. Any questions for Annie, any of the commissioners? The commission, I'm sorry. No questions? Okay. The next agenda item is the ARPA um, RFP. Who is that the one you just did, Annie? Okay. Uh, the next agenda item is open seats and commission on aging. There's three open seats. I have not gotten any information or heard if anyone had applied. Do you know if so, Annie? Uh, we just appointed somebody at our Tuesday meeting. Um, her name? What district? Um, an, I'm. I I believe it was an Atlas. Oh, actually. Yep. It's so, an Atlas seat. So, and her name is Jasmine Cooper. From what area? I'm not sure. Okay. Um, I know that she is a student at University of Michigan based on her resume, but I don't know where she lives in Washtenaw County, but I do know she lives in Washtenaw County. Okay, so we have one seat filled and we have two more to go. Is that correct? Correct, I believe one at-large seat and one for District 8. Uh, then we have another at-large because it's three. Jasmine did an at-large. So there's two more vacant seats, right? I think, Just, did we make it? I three think there's only three large? total. Right. Yeah. So and there's so only we, one remaining. Right. Okay. Yeah, Margie is an at-large. They just added another one. So there's one vacant at-large oh. seat. And then oh. the district eight, like Ashley said. Okay, perfect. Well, uh, there's no report from the chair. Olivia, and I have a question. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, and I guess I direct it to Ashley. Um, what's the best way of getting uh, the commission, uh, both the chair and Taylor, knowing about these appointments in advance? Because I know it just happened on Tuesday, but given that we had a meeting today, it would have been wonderful if we'd been able to reach out and said, here's the meeting rather than find out at a meeting. There's someone, so I'm just wondering what the best way to get information about those appointments to us would be. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, the answer is, you're right, I absolutely should have connected her to you, but like right after she was appointed. Um, but I will work with Taylor for um, for future appointments to make sure that Thanks. there's no lapse between when they're appointed and attending a meeting. Great. Thank you so much. Of course. Sorry about that, Elizabeth. I didn't see your hand up. I'm not used to this. So are there any are there any other questions? No. I don't want to rush the meeting, but um there's no report from the chair. And is there any new business? No new business. I have a question. Um what what speakers, presenters do you have coming up in the next few months? I don't have of anyone unless someone else, some other commission member have a interest. Yeah, so at I, our future planning meeting, um, I was updating everyone on the Healthy Aging Collaborative that the, um, Amanda Carlisle spoke on um, homelessness and older adults, especially in, uh, that are veterans. And Margie was very interested in having her come as a speaker. Um, well, and so I can, I I would recommend that as one of our next updates. One of our I, next would I would welcome that. Thank you, Marie. I, I like that. I see your hand up, Elizabeth. Yeah, we had talked in our officers meeting, if, if I recall, about uh, reaching out to the Healthy Aging Collaborative to, again, get some more, more information on transportation and uh, also to talk about housing. So maybe if folks have suggestions about or the contact information for anybody, they could get it to Taylor and then at our next officers meeting or maybe even advance, we can work on getting those scheduled. 
Marie, is that something you wanted to do, uh, have as our speaker at our next meeting? Um, yeah, I think, let me look at my email. I remember Marta reaching out to Dina about giving an update on the Healthy Aging Collaborative, specifically transportation. Yeah. Um, and I want to see when that was supposed to be. I, I thought that was going to be in September. I believe so. So that would be housing and transportation, Marie? Um, Dina would probably focus on transportation because that's all wrapped up and there's yeah. momentum happening from all of that. And we've only had one meeting on housing, but she'll probably give you some information. I can ask her to share the, the PowerPoint that Am Amanda gave to us okay. um, and, and update you guys on on where that's headed, but it's pretty early in the housing to give much of an update besides besides that. So you were thinking just transportation? Her focus would be transportation. Yep. Okay, Elizabeth, at our next officers meeting, let's uh, discuss that and we can get back with Marie. And then Marie, you can um, we can give you a date to invite them. How yeah, I'm gonna well, I'm gonna forward you this chain with Marta, Dina, and I, and so you can, Dina. It looks like Dina confirmed that she is going to be doing September. Okay, sounds great. So then Elizabeth will discuss that at our, at our next officers meeting, and set that up for September. Is there any other interest that the commission has for invitees? Okay, Marie, thank you so much for that. That's a great idea. Of course. Um, uh, setting up our, any so there's no new business from any commission member. Okay, then our next meeting um, is September 1st at 9 a.m. And uh, can we have a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion. Second. Phyllis. Okay. You guys have a lovely rest of August and we'll see you. No, this is well at our next meeting. Yeah. September. All right. Have a good month, everyone. You too. Bye. Bye-bye.